Hello everyone, today we're going to look at how to create and read files in your Windows form. We're going to use these controls that I have in front of us. Here we have a save button, an open button, and these two dialog buttons here, which are available you can just type dialog here and then you just drag them in and they are the the explorer dialogs where you can type in the file name so those controls give us a lot of flexibility when we want to give the user a chance to save their file or open a file so to save a file here we use a stream. We're going to focus mostly on text files, so I'm going to use a lot of simpler streams. Streams are just the data. It's the data, typically binary data, that comes from a file and we're able to read and process that data. So the first thing we want to do is create a stream. For saving files, we create a stream writer. I'm going to name my stream writer out file. Then we use the file class and create a text file here. We're going to save to the default location that Windows provides us. This is not always where you would typically save it if you were deploying this as professional software. But this is a very simple way to keep your files in the project and they'll always save to the same location which is in this bin debug folder. I'm gonna I'm gonna paste this location here just as a an indicator of where it is. So I'll show that in here. I'm going to delete the current files here that we were using during testing. But this is the location that it saves your files. It's nice because it's within the project. So now that we have a stream that's going to save our file, it's going to save it with this name here to this folder by default. Let's write something to that file. I'm just going to do a simple little for loop here that I've already written. It's going to loop three times. And then we are going to write to this out file stream writer. We're going to write a new line. There's other methods you can use, like the write method, which writes each character. The write line method, as it says here, a line terminator so it's just gonna every time you use the right line it's gonna press the enter key so here I'm doing some string concatenation I have line in quotes so I've created a string I'm adding a string to it what I have inside the parentheses is doing a little pre work before we concatenate it I'm saying do a little bit of integer math, then convert to a string for the concatenation. I'll let you explore what would happen if I didn't put this in parentheses and add the two string, but that's pretty important for making it look correct. And then we want to close our file. So this should save us our file. I'm going to write the very similar code that's needed to open the file to before we run it. So let's do a stream reader in file. And almost everything here is the same except of instead of create text, we are going to open this text. And it's also a, it's going to have the same name as what we just did up here for the create file we want to read that file it's gonna to save to the same location by default which is nice 
Now we need to create a while loop to read this file. And the while loop's important because we're looking we don't know the length of the file. With a for loop, we can predetermine the length. We don't know how big this file is. So rather than looking for a predetermined length, we're just looking for when there's no more data in the stream, which is what end of stream is going to do. It's going to return a Boolean, indicate whether the stream position is at the end. So it's looking for that last data, the last data point. It's looking for actually one plus that last piece of data. And if it's false, we're going to keep reading. But once we are at the end of the stream, we terminate the while loop. And while we're reading, while, while we're looping, let's just display the data that we're reading. So here we have a way to save this file. It's just going to say line one, two, and three. And we have a way to read this file. So let me go back to this open save file location here. And then let's take a look at how our program runs. So first thing I want to point out is my folder here is empty. And I'm going to press save. So our file appears just as we would have hoped. It wrote line 1, 2, and 3 which is exactly what we were hoping for. We open it and it's reading line one, two, and three. You could even do a sanity check and change up your file a little bit if you want to see is open really, really doing what I hope it is. Unfortunately, what's happening behind the scenes is I have to rerun the program. The file was considered open. So now I can save the file. Now I can read the, the changes. While I have this program open, it's still engaging in this file. This file is still considered open. So I wasn't able to make changes. But once I did change the file, you saw that it read line 3, 2, 1 in reverse, exactly as we would have expected. Now let's add one extra little nice detail to our file reading application, which is using a dialog box. Rather than just predefining the name, we can give the user some flexibility to choose the name. So I'm going to use this save file dialog control here. I know I've said in the past it's good to rename these, but I believe you can only use one save file dialog, in which case renaming it is typically not necessary if there's not going to be multiple of them. We're going to do show dialog, so this method will pop open just like message box show we have something that's going to pop open once this line of code executes. And then it's going to look for the result. Once this method, this method completes, it's going to then look for a dialog result. Only if the user clicks OK do we enter this if block. I'm going to put all of this code that we just wrote into this if block here. I believe I accidentally added an extra curly brace here. So now it's going to do a, a dialog and it's going to look for the OK but button click. And then it'll run this code if the OK button is clicked. The last thing we need to do is instead of looking at this fixed file, we want to look at the, the file that's within save dialog here because now save dialog has stored that value that the person has typed in and it's called file name so now the file name which the person the the user typed in to their window which I'll show in just a second shows up 
and we pull that information and now we write to that file in that location. Now we're going to do all the same for the open dialog. with a little bit of rewriting, but same logic here is going to apply. We first show the dialog box, we look for the OK result, and then we are comfortable reading. We also need to make sure we change our reader to look at the open file dialog file name. So now we've converted our code from a fixed file to being able to change the file names. So let's run our code and see how this does. So when I click Save, now we get this open dialog. Let's use that file name, but let's call it file2 and let's open that file. Line 1, line 2, line 3. And for a sanity check, let's open the other file, which we renamed to be 321 in reverse. Line 3, 2, 1. So now we've created a very simple way of reading and writing to files with Windows Forms. Thanks for watching.